Good evening, dear friends. This is Radhika Chopra. Thank you so much for joining in uh, today for my uh, first interview. Uh, and this time it is with uh, Mr. William Lawrence, uh, who is an astrologer. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining in, Amrita. Always a pleasure to have you on almost all my live videos. So thank you so, so much for all your support. Uh, today, um, I have come on five minutes early just to get a technical, uh, you know, sort of understanding of how to do this live video because this is the first time I am having a guest. So um, I'm just going to wait for him to send me a request to join the video. But before, uh, hi Vidhi, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, so before I have him on board, a little bit about what we are doing today and why have I invited him. Uh, as so, so many of you know that I have been really a student, a seeker, and from that place sharing what I know, uh, basically with what's helped me and what can help people. So in that way, I have been um, a coach, a mentor, as well as I have been practicing blueprint numerology for many, many years, as well as uh, teaching that subject. It's something very dear to my heart because the understanding of the cosmos and all of life is the deeper understanding of ourselves. And the more we understand ourselves deeply, not at just a personality level, the more we evolve, the more we grow, and the more holistic our life experience begins uh, becomes. So I have been interested in the subject of Jyotish. Uh, I think I will never really call myself a Jyotish or, uh, you know, an astrologer. Uh, I think you're always a student of this vast and deep subject. So I know very little about it, but whatever I know has fascinated me. And, um, and it can you know, it just is, is it's one of the most beautiful subjects. And I know a lot of people wonder whether it is just some uh, you know hocus pocus folklore or is it really scientific so in my understanding jyotish is something that comes from the vedas so it is very ancient it is one of the most well i'm biased beautiful beautiful subjects and um, mr william lawrence i'm going to add you in in just a minute just to give a little intro to people uh, before I introduce you. So this subject is very dear to my heart. Um, it's very fascinating because it's a lot about astronomy. So as a little child, have, have you ever had an experience of, say, lying in your bed at night and looking at the stars and then going into a space of wonder? What is it? And what do these stars mean? I think when we start looking at the, the skies and the stars and the constellations beyond, we have... And although we are looking so far out and so wide out is our vision, we are also looking so deep within us. So that's a little bit I can go on and on about how I feel about the subject. But today I'm introducing to you a gentleman I came across who I have loved his work, what he teaches, his depth of knowledge, whatever I've known of him. And I thought, well, we have an eclipse coming up on the 30th of November and why not uh, bring in someone who can talk to us a little bit about the eclipse. It is an astronomical phenomena but what is it beyond that? So I am going to, um, Mr. Lawrence could you send me a request again and I can get you back, you know, get you into the live video. Let me see. I'm obviously not good at this stuff. Mr. Lawrence, can you send me a request? Because I don't, oh, okay, wait. I think I can add him. Now? Mr. Lawrence, can you, there he is. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Okay, so I had a little chat with people uh, introducing well, I didn't introduce you except my meeting with you and how I came across you and as well as my 
fascination and interest in the subject of jyotish so welcome to this live video thank you and uh, so we i have been very fascinated with this phenomena of eclipse and reading about it listening to what it means and i know it's an astronomical phenomena but it has some impact from the astrological point of view so could you tell us a little bit about that so this is a very special eclipse i think fourth uh, in the year and the first eclipse following in taurus so mm-hmm. I, i i'll explain to you like like this rahu kedu enters a sign it is in a sign for 18 months and mm-hmm. it get triggered when the sun and moon conjoins it or there's an opposition between sun and moon which is during the uh, full moon and the new moon mm-hmm. major tra- transformation major changes uh, happened uh, to the world globally and to the person individually uh, during uh, uh, approximately there is a four eclipse d- uh, during this 18 months and for each people Uh, it has a different impact mm-hmm. usually a lunar eclipse is about an internalization uh, is about the emotion involved uh, mm-hmm. a lot about yourself a self discovery about yourself uh, mostly people uh, who are uh, having a, the sun sign or moon sign and ascendant as cancer and leo will have a major impact people are having sun dasa moon dasa rahu dasa kedu dasa can have a major impact so just to roll back because a lot of people don't understand the rahu and the ketu part of it you mentioned something very interesting you said that we've had four eclipses in this last one year so you're talking about year 2019 now into 2020 but, but yes but that, that eclipse uh, was everything over in gemini which had the corona factor right. now it is so the, moving to the taurus factor so that you uh, you are saying that the factor. eclipse where the eclipse could have triggered a lot of people have spoken about the the eclipse triggering this corona virus experience for the world it's a simple gemini uh, rules the lungs it is for communication and ninth is for travels uh, there okay. there was a nine about six seven planets uh, involved uh, jupiter saturn mars involved in this eclipse well, more, almost every planet was involved in it this is a very very uh, negative eclipse and naturally because a third is for lungs third is for breathing uh, uh, and especially it happened in aridra and mola more right. dead nakshatra uh, nakshatra so this had a very very big impact usually compared to uh, the other eclipses is it and this was it, when uh, this was about uh, uh, december 31st we had no uh, 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 31st okay uh, in 2019 there were three other eclipses later but they didn't have a major impact because there were very few planets involved right uh, if, if mars saturn involves in an eclipse it can have a global impact right each, each eclipse has good and bad into it uh, globally and individually it depends on the combinations so just you know for people who are absolutely toddlers and do not know anything about eclipses it is of course an astronomical phenomena in the sky right so yeah. uh, so the astronomy then translates into the astrological factor based on the uh, the experience it gives us right yes yes definitely yeah the actual, so, it's supposed to be the shadow of of uh, earth falling on uh, on the moon uh, on a lunar eclipse right so we have a lunar eclipse coming up which is on the 30th of november now just uh, i know my viewers here are you know one is interested in this phenomena because it's very mystical for a lot of people about eclipse and uh, a lot of people don't know much about astrology you know uh, the exposure to astrology is just here say uh, and of course in india we have this culture of making an astrological chart and somebody has consulted an astrologer at some point but some people don't even do that so just coming from that place that uh, this eclipse uh, and reason being that you know this has been a very difficult year for everybody in different ways and each individual is looking for what is next is it good is it bad is what is it going to change and um, and i know we are not here to predict the end of corona and beginning of corona we are not going to do that because as i said one of my teachers uh, said we have to learn to live through crisis as well right uh, yeah so we have to endure certain things that have been triggered we cannot change it we have to endure it however 
this eclipse that is coming on this lunar eclipse you said it is in the in the sign of taurus so the taurus being a fixed sign right a stable sign fixed it sign earthy sign it's it's a earthy sign so it's got to do everything to do with what's related to earth so hence it is material am i do i understand that correctly opulence uh, abundance it's a very sensual Correct. it's happening in rohini nakshatra or oh, rohini nakshatra for the viewers who don't know rohini nakshatra is a very uh, sensual nakshatra right and it is also the exaltation of the moon that's where the moon is most comfortable and um, and yes the taurus sign is a fixed sign it's got to do with material with food with all the good enjoyments of life you can say can i say that yeah, the sure. pleasures yeah. of life yeah every so, sensual gratification of life gratification of life okay and we are having an eclipse right there right so what does that mean for all See, of us uh, uh, more than the fixed sign i'll put it as it's happening in rohini the rohini is uh, uh, adi devata or a uh, higher lord is prajapati like brahma so he is right. a uh, god of productivity creation fecundity fertility so uh, eclipse uh, moon first is what is a full moon and an eclipse here it is on its own nakshatra and exalted an eclipse is taking place when the moon is extremely very strong and it is getting overpowered uh, by, by rahu mm. so it is like what i say these forces which i mentioned are going to have an effect usually rohini is also to do with agriculture is uh, a lot to do with agriculture and the, uh, it is happening in the second house of the natural kala purusha so uh, right. it is to do a lot to do with finance Uh, a hmm. lot of financial changes financial transformations uh, it can happen in the agricultural field also and uh, this is going to be the major aspect uh, uh, in this particular uh, lunar eclipse finance so, is going to have, uh, take a major turn so sometimes we get a sense of what is coming before it comes and um, what i have noticed as a lay person and i'm sure everybody here would have noticed it that there is a lot of sudden you know home chefs are coming up uh, even though you know restaurants have closed but people are going in for exotic foods uh, exotic uh, you know organic farming hydroponic farming and uh, you know of course financial markets is something spoken about because they are saying that you know the repercussions of covid in the world is going to impact the you know the the stock markets finances economy basically world over and things like that so is that something that becomes like a pinnacle experience to in this or it changes the fact, course house, yeah in fact second house is also house of the food so Ooh, there is okay. going to be an upsurge and change in the food pattern like what people eat what should not uh, be eaten that is very important what is mm-hmm. it is usually finance i just forgot to mention i you picked it up very correctly it's about food so this this eclipse is going uh, to be uh, very important like what people are actually going to eat the uh, major radical change See, and eclipse is mostly re- uh, regarding uh, what is a, a transformation an internal transformation so the lunar eclipse is going to be a major transformation and you can see the eclipses uh, 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 what is happening between taurus and scorpio mm-hmm. i don't want to mm-hmm. uh, say the scorpio factor this was a solar eclipse but it involves a right. uh, houses very strongly see mm-hmm. the scorpio is about letting go major transformation letting go uh, many new things being known revealed with uh, what is second was about actually uh, about indulgence about essentiality mm. a gratification uh, about a food about a, uh, what is how what we acquire this is the house which is going to have a major activation major change for the good and bad uh, for the world it's very important the finance and the food aspects uh, you will see a major change agriculturally uh, uh, th- this is going to be a major change because it is taking place uh, in, in rohini right rohini is about to be uh, radhana shakti Uh, what is the sign of productivity and abundance there there, there wow. is going, an eclipse is like a major stir in the world a major stir, major shake uh, you know what is say it's going berserk it can go good bad uh, it's like an obsession what is so obsession it's out of control like it becomes something control. that you cannot control yes. right yes. what is a phenomena phenomena. A phenomena is taking place in the house of uh, wealth finance food so food i'll put it as food and finance is going to be the major uh, uh, effect in this eclipse 
But when I'm hearing you, when you're talking about Taurus, and I know we are not discussing the solar eclipse in Scorpio, but when I hear that, I'm also hearing that there is going to be change out and in because out is Taurus and in is Scorpio. There is there is a depth in Scorpio and there is an outward expression in Taurus. I mean, they're opposite each other and there seems to be uh, there is. It seems to me when I hear that there is going to be a change within us and around us. Uh, there's going to be an emotional change because moon is this eclipse happening when moon is at its uh, strongest, highest, strongest. At, right. at the, uh, the solar eclipse is going to happen when the sun is at its lowest strength in Gandanda, with five other planets involved. Right. Uh, yes. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'll put it like the moon is the mind and sun is the ego. So there's going to be a change in the internal aspect of the person and the external ego or the self-image a person is going to take uh, to during this eclipse. But when you say the, the uh, uh, yeah, tell me. Sorry, when you say the word Gandanta for the Scorpio, just for the viewers, Gandanta is actually, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, that Gandanta is the last degree before the uh, last degree in and out of a water sign to a fire sign and this is where the planet feels as if it is uh, sort of unsupported is what i've heard or it feels like it's drowning or it's lost control or um it's i'm i'm trying to get the right words for it so when you say something like that that means the e are we going to grow emotionally and internally? Is there going to be a greater spiritual growth overall in this world where the egos start collapsing because the sun is in Gandanta? Would you say that? Yeah, you're okay. yeah, very perfectly correct. Because moon is very supported. This eclipse, Jupiter is aspecting it. Mercury is aspecting mm -hmm. it. Moon is extremely very strong. And it is like the moon is getting jerked. Somebody is shaking the moon. Okay, wow. the whole emotional ha aspect, or say it has to lose itself and it has to take into a, a new dimension. But here, your self-image, your ego, and your, your set of beliefs uh, uh, is going to get shattered. Uh, because the solar ec eclipse is going to be exactly opposite. So it is like how emotionally strong you are, uh, you can benefit from this eclipse. Because uh, how egoistic you are, uh, what I say, that this is, uh, can have an uh, effect on taller. Okay, so the advice is emotionally become more centered and, and you know, stop feeding your ego and coming from a place of ego, right? I mean, it's, it's time for us to shift but in that see, way. Uh, the eclipse is taking place when moon is strong. So you can suddenly see after the eclipse an emotional upset. Suddenly people oh. are getting very emotional. Uh, they can have a lot of psychological impact, paranoid, uh, phobias, this, that, fears. All this can start happening uh, mostly in the food, food and uh, finance circle. And about family, outlooks, beliefs, everything is Taurus. Taurus is a very conservative, uh, traditional sign. So all about right. a conservative tradition, all this can have a, uh, what do you say, a, a big uh, change, a big activation. Mm -hmm. It is just it's going to reverberate. So right. uh, this you can immediately see it, uh, the eclipse, and the, and the solar eclipse will be a different balance. Interesting. So we have had many eclipses in our lifetime so far, whatever is our age. Uh, we've not paid attention to it or had, did not have the right information or any information for that matter. Uh, but now it's, it's something that's interesting, as I said, because of what we are going through. We are suddenly starting to look beyond, you know, we all had it figured out, like how, what we want to do in this world and how in control we are. And, uh, you know, uh, that sort of a view, a worldview started, you know, like I am going to do this. I am the doer of everything. I create this. And I think year 2020, I always feel has showed us that, you know, um, it's not everything is in our control. There is a greater force out there. And there are many, many things we as human beings are not gods. So there is a difference between uh, us and the hand of God or the cosmic intelligence. Let me put it this way. So um, my question to you is that uh, we had a conversation before this call about the eclipse that it will affect countries and it will affect us individually. Uh, what affects us individually affects, you know, the human consciousness and what affects human consciousness does filter down and affects us individually, no matter who and what we are. So just a little, uh, if you could share with us what this means 
to some countries. So we are interested in, say, in India. Like, what does this mean to, like, before before you answer that, I just want to say, you know, what why I've asked you this question is, even the corona virus has played out differently in every country, right? Uh, Italy is different, USA is different, India, Singapore, Thailand has been different. Uh, and of course, logically, we are speculating at, oh, they managed this or they didn't manage this. All that must be true, but there must be something in individual uh, countries' uh, charts. When I say countries' charts, is the year that they were established as nations that becomes their kundli in astrologically, am I correct? Yeah. And so... Uh, depending on those placements, they have got affected uh, differently. I mean, that's one astrological perspective. Okay. So again, lunar eclipse, how is it going to impact uh, our country and any other country that you would like to mention? If it... For India, it, it is happening in its ascendant. It, Taurus is the ascendant of India. It is uh, The Rahu Kedu has come to uh, uh, the one and seventh axis of India. So this is mm. very important and the eclipse is taking place in the one and seven as uh, uh, houses uh, involving India. So it's India's emotion, uh, image, self-image to the world at large and its relationship to the world at large will be the major change. Uh, Rahu Kedu, the nodes in uh, the first house and the seventh house, uh, it, it is uh, the global appeal which uh, India will have to the world. I think this is going to be a major change. Uh, 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 India, it can dominate uh, India's uh, outlook to the world. Interesting. And, and because it's happening, the ascendant, there could be a lot of emotional frenzy from this eclipse. A lot of uh, a bit of uh, fanatism, uh, a lot of emotional uh, 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 frenzy uh, could start off in the, during the eclipse. In it our country. 11th, uh, it is 11th house uh, from uh, India's moon sign. So it is not going to be negative, but a lot of uh, what is emotional frenzy, one side will happen, which is to be balanced with the sun on the other side. A lot of discipline and letting go uh, has to happen. So this is actually an eclipse means two things. It activates on particular things and there is something which is to be uh, balanced. It does not happen in, a, uh, in one house. It involves two houses. One is the main house and second is the balance house, like the Rahu factor and the Kedu factor. Here it involves moon and Rahu. Hmm. Uh, Rahu is like that uh, uh, active outward uh, uh, personality and Kedu is an inward personality. Somebody so is asking on the chat, what is India's moon sign? So we talked about, you said ascendant is not. Cancer is India's moon. Uh, uh, oh. but what is says moon sign for the uh, independence chart. But the natural um, uh, 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 sign of uh, for India is uh, Capricorn. You mean the, the moon is in Capricorn? No, 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 no. It, 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 the, uh, India is ruled by Capricorn. Oh, it's ruled, it's ruled by Capricorn. By hmm. Capricorn. This is given by Varaha Mirror. But generally from the independent chart, the, the Lagna is Taurus and India's moon sign is uh, uh, Cancer with Pushya Nakshatra. Oh, beautiful. Hmm. Nice. I like Pushya Nakshatra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, uh, so that was somebody's question and I just thought because people are asking questions so I just thought I will put that in. So yes, for India you're saying that there is, can be an emotional frenzy uh, uh, rather that can trigger off on one side an emotional frenzy but it is a very, very important uh, eclipse yeah, for India. Emotional frenzy because moon is the third lord it is mostly regarding neighbors. Neighboring I get country. it. To be a friend mm -hmm. because moon is the third lord in the ascendant, uh, but very powerful. But it has been uh, what do you say overpowered by Rahu. So this is going right. mostly. I feel it is going to be re regarding uh, emotional frenzy regarding neighbors. Neighbors, okay. And what about USA? See USA, it is happening in the ninth house. I think it is going uh, Virgo's the ascendant. Uh, the eclipse ascendant is starting over there. Uh, I think USA is going through a major change during this eclipse. Major change. Major change. A lot mm -hmm. of predictions uh, th because this is uh, on Trump's uh, uh, chart. Uh, Astral, yeah, his uh, his he's Jan having, He's having his Rahu Kedu return, and his Sun and Moon are reversed. Where his Sun is and Moon was, to, this eclipse is happening in a reversed way. So this so is looking like like two things: either there's reversal of fortunes or an unexpected turn in uh, Trump's uh, uh, life. Right. I, I don't know how to take about how, how do you predict that. But sure, there's going to be a major reversal of changes in his life. 
so it's an impactful time for him basically yeah, in short and as he is the if i have to take his chart what is he uh, this will affect uh, nationally america also very naturally. strongly uh, it is repeating uh, 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 what is he was born in a lunar eclipse right yes one pro uh, lunar uh, uh, an eclipse can be very powerful uh, to be born with well, a lot of people have predicted it's a very powerful time for him and uh, so that's another topic and you know i've i've seen an interview of uh, uh, somebody is asking about australia she lives in australia so i don't know whether you have the ascendants of australia so every country is you do do, no, do i you? don't have it no maybe you we'll have, have this question i'll keep yeah, everything yeah. ready absolutely <laughs> absolutely this was mostly about india and uh, and so how does it affect us individually because um you mentioned that in countries where the lunar eclipse is most visible is where it will be most impactful and in india it is not uh, directly impacting uh by mild, mild impact milder impact country which is visible will have a very very strong impact correct but you, but however individually we all will be impacted by an eclipse yeah, depending on our chart right see, there is a conjunction naturally sun moon opposition with rahu ketu involved is always always everybody has to feel it the actual hmm. let's say what is say the intensity of the epicenter uh, is felt where it is visible right like and said, which are the countries yeah. which are visible in like from south america europe uh, uh, totally those countries with uh, england everything uh, the lunar eclipse is very strong It is a bit of uh, uh, what do you say the northeast of India a bit is uh, uh, the eclipse is appearing. It is appearing right. like like for India at one five around one and to five thirty. So it is in the day. It's so, in the day. Uh, uh, it is in day. So it is not going to have a very strong uh, impact. But individually, it will have an effect. In everybody's chart, and I understand that everybody has a very different, unique chart. So that is an individual consultation, and people can consult you astrologically if they want to. I will, uh, you know, give them your details as well if they are interested. Uh, but uh, tell me, I mean, they, we've heard about you know people telling us to do certain things in eclipses. Typically, uh, you know, I was expecting my child. I was told to just sit inside the room. We don't use knives. We don't do things like that. A lot of people think it's just. you know again superstition but there are deep meanings behind this i have come to realize over a period of time so there are certain do's and don'ts are there certain things that facilitate our spiritual growth and our spiritual growth is the fundamental or the basis on which all our growths happen am i correct yes, would you say that yeah so to to establish yourself on a sound spiritual uh, you know root yourself strongly in something spiritual sent anchor yourself it's very very important so what is it that we as individuals can keep in mind uh, during eclipse for example this lunar eclipse see many people uh, have one belief like doing sadhana during eclipse is very very powerful but right. i'm telling you during an eclipse the energy is extremely very very strong whatever hmm. you anything you do it is like 1000 times uh, 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 many fold it becomes so you just can't take uh, any mantra and chant what is if you are, you must know to handle the mantra it like you you say 108 it becomes like 10 1000 uh, uh, folds so, yes. uh, you your kundalini can get active during this time it actually doesn't get active it'll get aberrated it'll get affected very strongly so maybe what is say uh, people can stay silent meditate they can tell a very soft mantra or a nama only hear bhajans uh, what is say stay quiet that should be the best because whatever you do during the eclipse it's not mantra anything your mental state uh, during the eclipse can also uh, what is say have a uh, uh, aggravated effect so it is best you stay very very calm uh, why they ask you not to eat is uh, what is say your food can affect affect yes. you see this like the lunar eclipse is about the magnetic energy the mm -hmm. solar eclipse of the electrical energy so uh, uh, generally people are not supposed to be near a very powerful uh, magnetic energy because that can uh, uh, affect you especially you know pregnant women are asked to be very very safe during uh, right. not supposed to cut certain things uh, this is very uh, important or i will tell you what are the precautions you take for an eclipse Uh, you chant what is afana before the eclipse certain mantras which you know like gayatri mantra rudra mm. vishnu sahasram lalita sahasram om namah shivaya anything and then after it immediately take a bath with salt water 
or with turmeric uh, or, or the sea, uh, in the sea you can take a bath and then have a chanting it will immediately purify you of all the negativities or the intensity uh, of the eclipse during mm-hmm. it i will i will always advise mild sadhana mild mantras uh, to be done or be in a very optimistic state because anything you try to do overdo uh, it will aggravate too much but there are people if you are initiated this is the best uh, time to take control of sarpa rahu kedu mantra if it is chanted during this time you can get siddhi uh, but are they you must know you must take it from a guru you must know how to handle it there are Correct. certain uh, tamoguna mantras which can be taken and uh, chanted but again you must know the uh, procedures this nashtabandana is a protection you must know to relieve yourself only then uh, take into ch- chanting mantras you just can't take any mantras and p- many people say this mantra that mantra okay also donations anything you do it has a many so even you give away during this period uh, what you donate during this period is supposed to be extremely very very good it has a thousand fold effect people mm-hmm. do uh, pitru karma uh, before and after the eclipse is it so that it is, is just very, uh, like what very, we do in shrad or something like that it is supposed to be a very good time to or to say rumo pitru dosha so anything regarding pitru dosha is done during that time is very powerful telahoma many people do it uh, um, uh, after the eclipse or before the eclipse uh, because uh, this is a most powerful uh, time to do it uh, right. solar eclipse will be more powerful for pitru karma this is uh, this is lunar eclipse is not exactly for uh, uh, pitru karma you just do mm-hmm. a normal practice you know where, where uh, the, uh, the new moon should be there the solar eclipse right. is very powerful for this is just you you do a, a particular uh, bali before and after will be okay Hmm. somebody is asked can we donate sir so yes, yes i think you are speaking about speaking okay, about donation you, even donation i'll tell you it is a fixed sign uh, uh, and uh, being a stable sign and moon in, in wall and prajapati donating milk water curd any milk products donating silver uh, during this period is very very good uh, or what is after the eclipse have a silver pradima sil- silver idol of uh, a serpent has to be donated which will remove the negative effects of the, of the Uh, what is the eclipse effect uh, um, uh, uh, this is very very important any food articles uh, taurus has to do with food so any right. food preferably liquids so anything uh, to liquid. do with milk again uh, because it's milk, moon so any milk liquid, any milk preferably uh, milk prajap rohini is supposed to be a product of anything to do productivity any food food will be the best uh, to be uh, donated during this period right So yes, Shalini, he said food. So you can uh, donate milk. So when you say donate, you do donate it in the mandir, or you can give it to the uh, to people who are like in an orphanage, or you know, anyway, not anyway, people. Anyway, anywhere anyway. is fine. The, the thing is, in India, the eclipse is not visible, so uh, nobody will know. Nobody will be following it. If it is visible, everything will be closed, so they can Correct. go out, give it uh, uh, to anybody. So, uh, right. Uh, especially, uh, uh, what uh, you can give it to places where uh, it is in much need. Right. Often it yes, often it is very good. Okay. It's very very important. Right. Yeah. Yes, they are asking the same day, preferably yes. I would say the same day. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, uh, isn't uh, it? No, during the eclipse. Uh, during the eclipse. Okay. There are two things. Donating after the eclipse is to remove the negativity of the eclipse. During mm-hmm. the eclipse is to get the manifold benefits. Can you repeat the time for the eclipse in India? Because people who are in I other time zones can convert it. I think it. It, is, it is about one four p.m. to five twenty-two uh, p.m. Okay. Uh, the maximum eclipse is at three thirteen p.m. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess. Okay. Right. So I, you, I, what I found was very interesting when you talked about doing mantra jap and don't do anything because a lot of people start doing certain beej mantras or some things that they take off the internet or, uh, you know. So there is what I understand there is, uh, you know, there are certain mantras which our body, mind, psychology can handle. They are safe per se, uh, and and the beej mantras are very very um, potent and. Uh, if we are not able to it's like if you have a knife in the hand you should be able to use it constructively or you will injure yourself so the same way uh, i feel that we must be uh, responsible with all this information because today information is so easy to get you get on to google you'll get on to internet there will be someone giving you any information you know and we we tend to try it out and then we have adverse effects we cannot handle it emotionally psychologically or even physically 
right? So uh, that was a very, very important point that we just, and yes, sitting in silence or listening, or I feel the bhakti, you know, uh, whatever is your isht dev or God that you resonate with, uh, just, you know, establishing a connection of love and to me, in my mind came Krishna just now. And of course, because Krishna was born in Rohini Nakshatra. Uh, so, and he is such an epitome of, you know, love. So just, I have an idol of Krishna, even just to hold that idol sometimes is very comforting. So each one will have their own thing to do. But I feel that path of just love, you know, especially when it's moon and it's Rohini, to immerse yourself in something that brings you love, uh, in, you know, an experience of bliss, uh, that itself will take care of so many things, you know. See, actually, the, the, you have mentioned it, Krishna, very correctly. Uh, it, it involves Rohini and Anuradha. See, Anuradha is ruled by Radha and Rohini right. is Krishna. So I think visiting a temple after the eclipse, especially a Krishna temple, will be the best palliative for this eclipse because it is taking place in Rohini. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Anuradha is Radhana Shakti, uh, the nakshatra of worship and devotion. So you, you would point it very, yeah. very correctly. So devotion, to balance this eclipse, devotion is the, the most important thing to, to be done. And not only that, the Rashi of Taurus is Venus and Venus is to do with bhakti and devotion also. Yes. You know, yes, so, and Venus so that... Very strong during this eclipse. Right. And uh, everything should be invo involving a female this time. So going to a Devi temple will be better after the mm. eclipse. Or even chanting a Devi mantra during this uh, eclipse is very good. But take a no small mantra, mild mantra, uh, just a Namavali or something and can be chanted. Uh, and like you said, it, see, it is many fold, thousand times uh, fold. So you take Bija mantra, anything. Uh, if you are an expert, uh, you know about mantras, <laughs> it's safe. Or else for the normal uh, person, I will say, just take a simple uh, yeah. uh, Devi mantra, Om Parvati Namaha, something like that, simple at right. church, and take any huge mantras or hear them. Take Lalita Sasna, we hear them. You can hear Chandi, you can hear them. But on, or a budget, or on Devi. The Devi will be the best to be uh, appeased during this thing. And I, so, I in laugh. fact, I was listening to uh, Lalita Sayasranaram by this channel called the Sanskrit channel, and I will definitely mention them because they are dedicated to giving people the right information about Sanskrit, the way you pronounce it. So, uh, you know, their version of the Lalita Sayasranaram was also very, very beautiful. So you all can check it out on YouTube. Uh, the Sanskrit channel. So uh, it's a 45 minutes to 50 minutes, but it is so soothing that even if I put on the headphones and hear it, it just relaxes the entire body, uh, relaxes the mind. It has an effect on our nervous system. And I think that in turn will have an effect on our emotions, right? Uh, so all this is helpful. So uh, so you are saying donations, you are saying, um, uh, you know, uh, silent meditation or aradhana or bhakti or something like that is helpful. Is there anything else? Actually, one that... thing I forgot, it just came to me now, uh, I will tell you. See, when the uh, o ocean of milk was churned, uh, you know, moon and uh, Venus appeared. Uh, moon and Lakshmi appeared during this time. Mm. Okay. Right. This is very much with this eclipse because moon is exalted and it is Venus house. When you said it's Venus, I remember it is Venus house. So this is like, this, and it's, it was Rahu Kedu. It's the churning process and here in this eclipse, Moon and Lakshmi are being born. What I say, this is being uh, a birth is being uh, taking place here. So it is you need to what I say utilize this it very correctly if the sun is the ego is controlled. So this I, that is I, I, so I, beautiful. Mm -mm. So you have to handle this eclipse like what I say, like in the churning, Moon and Lakshmi are born. Uh, this particular eclipse, this is uh, this is the same combination. This up uh, this is appearing here involved so it is if you know to, if you channelize your, yourself correctly with the ego controlled uh, this is definitely for each one it, it is uh, uh, what is a moon and lakshmi being born in their lives how beautiful that is because sir i feel like you know every day we have a manthan of sorts anyway our emotions when they get stirred it's a you know it's literally the manthan and in the samundra manthan even uh, poison came out you know, and this, so whenever emotions are stirred, we have, uh, we have 
beauty and then we have this part which is uncomfortable that also stirs up and it is what we bring to life it is what we allow fill ourselves with right to fill ourselves with this what you said the moon's energy which is really a energy of peace and essentially we all are looking for that one thing peace you know uh, we all know troubles in life come and go and challenges come and go but we are not looking for a trouble free or challenge free life we know that's neither possible um but but we are looking for a sense of peace so that moon is the one that gives you that shanti the sukh you know and 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 also lakshmi because lakshmi people think it's wealth it's not that we will become rich but we will be we will not become rich but we will become wealthy as people that means we are resourceful and um, i shared this with my children during diwali that ashta lakshmi lakshmi is actually laksha the goals of life right well, well. um and dhana lakshmi is one lakshmi but they are ashta lakshmis so it is about having the whole experience of life she brings you the fullness of life am i correct when i say that thank so you. peace and fullness of life perfect like you pointed out uh, lakshmi means lakshya the goal right. the focus what is you just need to be focused on as life unfolds what whatever you have to do it if you do it uh, it is lakshmi uh, entirely into your life uh, right very very true very very true yes right and it all begins from inside i think it all becomes it's all based on how we feel correct right yes. yeah yeah Especially so it is uh, eclipse, uh, one more thing i forgot to mention yes, see please the, this lunar eclipse is very much about uh, the moon and lakshmi being born but the solar eclipse is like the alahala the poison <laughs> <laughs> so you one okay. must you, okay that the, the solar eclipse is happening in scorpio you will understand scorpio right. poison <laughs> so this is very much as a typical uh, samudra mandan is taking place where alahala is also being emitted at the same time what is a uh, uh, moon and what is a lakshmi are being born so you this is like a balance you must know how to control the alahala you will have to give it to shiva you will have to give it Yeah, what is it? Exactly, uh, moon, uh, sun, and Gandanda is like actually in the death spot. Yeah, it in the poison yes. spot. And moon yes. and sun represents our image, our ego, uh, uh, what is it? Our total, whatever we think we are. So that if it is controlled, the moon, uh, what is it? The the emotion and the luxury, uh, the wealth, uh, it it'll be in our favor. So when you say sun is also, but the sun is also power. You know, it's all positions of power. Uh, Uh, and uh, yeah and uh, it it seems that it probably will go yeah we will do something on solar eclipse if everybody is interested they are very interested so yeah but we will talk about that because i think that's a different subject altogether because sun in gandanta and that to scorpio as a constellation is a very intense very uh, it's got its own beauty but it's also very intense very deep it's going into the darkness and you know carl jung said that we will never become from unconscious to conscious by imagining figures of light but you know you have to go through this deep transformation you have to go into the dark alleys and come out through it and i think that's what scorpio is it it takes you through the darkness and you have you develop courage and you transform in in that state of fear in the state of the unknown because scorpio is so deep it's the patal you know it's it's is the hidden and so while taurus is the outer treasures uh, scorpio is our inner treasure is what how i see it right it's one way of looking at it and um, so yeah sun in scorpio will be interesting in terms of governments and you know positions of power and people is what i am thinking but of course you are authority on that and we'll speak about it another time but uh, this is so so interesting uh, because you know we are not disconnected from these phenomena in the world outside we are part of it and the moon is within us and the sun is within us and what it represents so they're not just celestial objects they're doing their own thing and we are doing our own thing so we all are interconnected and hence uh, these planets have an effect on us as we have an effect on them i would say you know it's interconnection Definitely. right so uh, a few people had some questions i will just ask them we will take one or two questions and then i think we are um, almost done with time so i want to keep that in mind so uh, somebody had a question i will 
I will take two questions for uh, uh, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, and if anybody wants to be in touch with him and contact him uh, for their individual chart from his, uh, somebody's asked, I have one question. I am born in Rohini Nakshatra. Does this eclipse have more significance in my life? So when you say you're born in Rohini Nakshatra, is your moon is in Rohini Nakshatra? I guess that's what she means. That's yes. definitely uh, uh, what you say. Rohini Nakshatra people are going to have the ma uh, maximum. It is not only the moon. Anybody having any planet in Rohini, uh, they are going to have a major Im impact. Even the Lagna is in Rohini, uh, uh, everybody is going to have a major impact. But yes, the moon in Rohini will have a very, very big impact. But it depends on what is it, what what house it is. Right. What is it, uh, what house it is for her. It depends. I, uh, uh, it's very general if I, uh, I tell them uh, uh, what is going yeah. to be the impact. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is moon, um, uh, the moon? What is the lordship? Uh, see, the eclipse is, ha is, is taking place between uh, sun and moon. So what is the lordship of the sun, moon, uh, and which house it is taking place? Uh, that will have major impact. If you want, I can give you a, a, a few lineup on how it is going to be for each sign. Please, we can quickly uh, do that. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll have a word for each sign. Like, like, five, like for a, a person born in the ascendant or moon sign in Mesha, Aries. Aries. This is about, yes. Uh, this, this is about food, family, and finance. Major impact is going to be there, because I can't say good or bad because it depends on what planets are there for them and what strength is the second house. But this is this area is going to uh, affect them a lot. Uh, finance is going to be the major aspect. Uh, then for a Taurus uh, ascendant uh, or a, a, a Taurus moon, this is going to be the major effect. It is on them. It is on, uh, it is about what is a, uh, uh, their self image, self emotion, and about relationship and balance. Very, very important for uh, they will, I think uh, Taurus ascendants uh, or moon will have the major impact. Okay. Uh, uh, a Gemini ascendant or moon, uh, emotional health is very important. Uh, about finance. They could have a lot of travel and uh, about how much they're going to spend. Uh, financially, it could affect them a lot. A lot of expenditures and a lot of unnecessary travels could be there. And a lot mm -hmm. of emotional uh, drain for a, a Gemini moon especially. Uh, for a, a, a cancer, it is going to be about indulgence. A lot of <laughs> indulgence. Yeah. Will be there. A lot of uh, socializing will be there. Uh, and a lot of creative uh, aspects will be there. Uh, for a Leo ascendant moon, it is going to be about uh, su sudden interest in what, uh, to achieve, to accomplish, uh, to do certain things. Uh, karmically, they'll be very interested, very, very uh, overactive. Uh, see, you must understand an eclipse is about uh, activation or an obsession in a particular, uh, some certain aspects for each sign it changes. Uh, hmm. so, but next for a Virgo, it is going to be spiritual and material abundance. Uh, what they, they can uh, they uh, might start on higher studies or, uh, or they can get initiated they can go on a pilgrimage uh, it's very good uh, for, uh, for a Virgo for a Libra it is uh, it's going to be a major trans uh, transformation for them it's happening in the eighth house for them eighth house uh, yes eighth house for them is going to be a major transformation emotionally they have to reorganize themselves what to keep in what to let go uh, uh, they can affect them, especially if the moon is in. Uh, I'll say that, uh, rather than the ascendant, from the moon sign, the effect will be very, very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, Scorpio, uh, moon, moon uh, and ascendant, uh, it is happening in the seventh house. You must understand. It's about relationship, uh, how to organize, manage the relationship. And, and the world, people, because seventh house is not only your spouse, it's the world outside, right? Yes, yeah, definitely. Your connection with the world outside is, is also matters a lot. Uh, what I say, uh, it might uh, expand uh, very much. Uh, for uh, Sagittarius, it's happening on the six and uh, twelve houses. Again, it is about emotional health. Uh, what mm -hmm. is emotionally, uh, they can uh, get affected a lot. They need to manage it. Uh, I'll, I'll, what I say, they need to have some remedial measures. Stuff. Sagittarius mode. Sagittarius mode. Okay. Uh, emotional uh, health can be affected. Uh, uh, for Capricorn Moon and Ascendant, uh, it is a very positive uh, eclipse. A lot of creativity, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of interest. Uh, the mind will open up uh, to things. And it is also the seventh lot. It is also about relationship. Uh, uh, suddenly a frenzy in relationship takes place. Okay. Uh, it can, mostly is positive, uh, but either way, it, it can uh, jerk up certain things over there. Mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for an Aquarius, it's happening in the fourth house. Uh, 
your comfort center and peace and suddenly uh, your comfort center is uh, disturbed uh, what is a uh, you have to reorganize that it's about your home your mother uh, your peace so they can suddenly feel very very emotional at heart mm-hmm. and for a pisces is about your neighbors your new interest uh, you pick up it's about your travel say so they can get really uh, activated this is about the 12 sign so i will say actually the uh, people need to worry or have remedial measures done will be a uh, libra uh, and a sagittarius a little bit or gemini these these three can have an effect so i'll ask them to be what is say uh, have some remedial measures done after go to a temple simple have these do- uh, the donations which i told you as mm-hmm. have to it or some chanting to be done uh, a silver sarpa vigraha uh, around your head and then give it away or put it in the temple will be the best way immediately ask him take a salt water bath salt uh, giving away salt will be a very good remedy giving away salt would be a good remedy okay. a very good yeah, very uh, for good. the uh, for sagittarius and libra moon or for anybody anybody is okay no, right? only these three people no only this gemini gemini, gemini. Uh, every all of them will have a mild turbulence is because rahu is poison as such what i say but it will turn out to be good uh, but but these three signs uh, can be the most important and especially anybody is running sun dasa moon dasa rahu ketu dasa or antar dasa will also be affected or anybody is having any planets in taurus very uh, that particular uh, those planets will all, also be affected if they right. dasa is run, if they dasa is running can be affected it's a very right. general uh, thing but anybody right. moon dasa, the maximum will be a moon dasa anybody is running moon dasa or andar dasa uh, the moon will get very very active <laughs> okay <laughs> okay and what fun the activation will be whichever house it is right mm-hmm. interesting okay so that was that's one can talk endlessly on this subject and a okay, hundred questions mean, yeah one i'll mention about yes. mobility so this is about fecundity and fertility so i will i next 3 months i will what is ask people uh, uh, not to get pregnant or involve uh, this can have a this kind of things have a global thing personally uh, and then it's also about the fertility about uh, uh, agriculture crops and not do anything major regarding this at, at least at least for 2 3 months is it uh, okay somebody can postpone this, because this is going to be globally affect the fertility of people Mm-hmm. Uh, uh personally your health fertility regarding this your productivity as uh, as such not for everybody it is only for these three signs mainly but I, as such if i will ask everybody to avoid for the next three months when uh, it gets it's already the uh, lunar eclipse is aspected by jupiter so the negativity is at its least but anything you can uh, be safe of is this is the thing it, it everything is around fecundity fertility and productivity is going to go out of control there is a negative shade and there is a, an absurd an obsession everything regarding right. and the finance field the second house of the natural zodiac so the finance field can suddenly look swing so people can make thing. emotional decisions regarding money which they should avoid would you say that as well yeah. Yeah. especially when mo- this eclipse is happening when moon is exalted in its own nakshatra uh, what is uh, so you can see the people are going to get extremely very emotional they this like they'll start getting a lot of interest wherever moon is in their house that aspect they will get activated they'll be more interested they'll be going towards it they'll jump towards it uh, there'll be a frenzy uh, regarding it one uh, extremely very obsessed about which wherever the moon is they, it is going to be for them because moon Whatever is impulse is for- it's also reaction and impulses moon is your deepest impulses and people can become very impulsive in the way they express themselves the kind of decisions they make the really in their relationships so yes. emotional stability is what we all are um going to pay attention to during this eclipse because some of us can have a difficulty with it or some of us are going to uh, establish it or, or balance it or become you know work towards a much more emotional emotional strength right am i am i correct when i'm yes. saying that yeah yes like people who so, are who are, uh, who are very quiet who don't know how to express themselves will find this very active okay people who are already very active, very very mentally active emotionally active will find it difficult to control they have to channelize it correctly very interesting so a little bit uh, for people who uh, would like to speak to you after this uh, can contact you as well um, and i can send them your number is that all right mr williams Absolutely. Yes. yes 
yeah so uh, this was very interesting i uh, i want to say something here uh, you know nothing is just happening randomly i was telling mr lawrence that i was sitting in meditation on wednesday and of course there are a billion thoughts in meditation but i had one such thought that came you know a a thoughts can be very mental this mental random activity or a thought can come from an idea that comes from a place that is beyond the mind so and i thought why not uh, i love this subject and this is my ode my reverence to this subject of jyotish to all the rishis who brought us this knowledge for our culture for our country and um, and also people who have mastered this subject and use it correctly without bringing in fear to other people uh, but really to educate us at a deeper level how we should manage our lives our emotions and live in a more evolved way or at least attempt to do so and i think that's what you know i love about this subject and and your uh, my passion shows of course you know whether it is numerology or astrology i can just go on and on and i love to see the correlationship with it but anyway my point here is that uh, thank you so much because every time i hear this i feel there is a part of me that grows and there is a part of everybody who hears this we are very privileged to get this information and there is a part of us that becomes more enlightened and i think the moon is about enlightenment and it's not about samadhi but it's about becoming bringing more light into our minds uh bringing more you know where your heart and your mind are in sync together i think that's where we have a balanced life right right now my heart and my mind is in sync and in harmony so i'm enjoying this this is a meditative experience but when there is we get disturbed by our thoughts we get completely shaken and some more than others so that throws our life completely out of balance and it creates this poison this halal that you speak about it creates poison within us and we are not able to uh, assimilate or digest it and move beyond it and that's the process so uh, we are short of time so i want to thank you so much okay. and uh, for make, giving me this time and we will speak and if people are interested we will do a little bit about scorpio i love scorpio you are a, you you understand scorpio i understand scorpio <laughs> and so it's it's fascinating it's mystical and why not speak about it too if if you can give us time and if people are interested thank you everybody for joining in today i will be sharing this igtv on instagram so you can watch it later please share it with your friends and family as well and um, i will put uh, mr lawrence's number in uh, under the igtv link i'll put it there so thank you everybody namaskar thank you, thank you so much bye bye